You know, in the last decade, oil and gas development in Colorado has evolved. It's evolved technologically. Uh, it's moved into suburban and urban areas, and urban and suburban areas have expanded into areas that have traditionally been associated with extractive industries. And yet our rules, our safety requirement, our siting process has simply not kept up. When you introduce heavy industrial operations into densely populated areas, conflicts occur. We need a legal, legal framework to solve these conflicts. Uh, this bill does that. The legislation we're discussing today and will shortly be introduced provides clear language that local governments have land use authority as they do in almost any other area of economic activity to protect their public health, safety, welfare, environment, and wildlife as drilling occurs. The bill also clarifies that local governments have the authority to regulate oil and gas operations, including land use and surface impacts, siting and nuisance. Much of that authority exists in a gray legal area today. This bill does an excellent job providing the clear legal parameters around that local authority. And finally, the bill provides clear guidance to avoid conflict between local and state governments. Now look, we know that this bill won't solve every single issue related to the development of oil and gas. But we do know that it goes a long way. I want to introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker, Aaron Martinez. We're honored to have Aaron with us here today. We're fortunate to have her alive. She's here as a living ambassador to tell her family's tragic story publicly for the first time. She lost her husband, Mark, her brother, Joey, in an explosion that destroyed her home in Firestone in 2017 that she and her son narrowly escaped. She knows all too well how broken the current system is. As a governor, as a father, as a son, as a brother, I would do everything in my power to prevent Aaron from having to be up here today as she is. I know that we all share in her heartache, and I thank her for the courage that she has as a living memory and a legacy to Mark and Joey to help prevent future tragedies and anybody having to go through what she did. It's my honor to introduce Aaron Martinez. Thank you very much for those kind words. Um, good afternoon. As the governor said, my name is Aaron Martinez, and I am a survivor of the Firestone home explosion. <clears throat> I am here today to share with you my story and to support change that will hopefully keep this from ever happening again. Nobody should ever have to experience what my family has had to go through these past almost two years. I feel a direct responsibility to keep that from happening. On April 17, 2017, my home exploded because odorless natural gas had saturated the soils and invaded the drains into my house, escaping from a nearby oil and gas well. This gas collected in my basement after a well that had been shut off, had been a shut-in well for about a year, was turned back on. My husband Mark and brother Joey were working in the basement at the time, and they did not survive the explosion. There have been several stories blaming the explosion on a hot water heater installation. These stories could not be further from the truth. Nothing they did caused the explosion. My home and family were destroyed because my house was next to a leaking flow line that had been left connected to the well. It is public knowledge that the well was owned by Anadarko and that Anadarko had acquired the well from another company, Noble Energy. The gas leak went undetected for four months. It should have been inspected and it should have been pressure tested. On the day of the explosion, I remember being blown into the air and trapped between falling debris. The entire house was lifted off of its foundation. It fell completely to one side. My son had to crawl on his hands and knees through a tunnel to a window and make the decision to jump out and save his own life. A group of heroic construction workers nearby 
saw him jump out and quickly worked to save my life. My husband and brother were trapped inside. My son and daughter's life, as well as mine, will forever be impact impacted by this day, and our lives will never be the same. I understand that no one ever intended for this to happen. I have no desire to destroy an industry. Lots of good people depend on this industry for their livelihoods. I respect that. However, with great tragedy should also come great change. Human life should come first. The only way to make sure this never happens again is to learn from this tragedy and create safer regulations and guidelines that put human safety first. With the proper checks, balances, and safety protocols, we can prevent this kind of tragedy from happening to anyone else. There is another part of this story that you need to know. After the explosion and many months of recovery, I began searching for a new home. My son was very scared and he told me, Mom, you better make sure that there are no wells or flow lines under or near our home. I found a new home and was assured that the only well was a plugged and abandoned well far away from our new house. We took them at their word, we moved in, and I could comfort my son that it was safe. Months later, I saw crews from the oil and gas industry digging and searching for an abandoned well behind my house. They kept getting closer and closer to my property line. They finally located the well in my neighbor's backyard along the fence line that we share. As a result of this incident, we are in the process of moving again, and I am trying to get my son to trust this time it will be okay. We need to have accuracy in the location of all oil and gas infrastructure, and this information needs to be made publicly available. We should have the right to know what we are living and working on top of and next to. As this bill is debated, the oil and gas industry may say that my family's case is a fluke and that a tragedy like this will never happen again. But as Colorado keeps growing, we will continue to build neighborhoods and businesses and schools in places where oil and gas wells and flow lines also exist. The time is now to make a change. As an industry, I would think you would want to make all the necessary changes to prevent something this tragic from ever happening again. Mark and Joey deserved better. We all deserve better. Thank you.